It's Temple Talk. On today's episode, from Bell Tower Music, Rubber, and local blogger Vanessa Fariolo, meet your hosts, Lindsay Moraskin, Kiara Jones, Drew Shipley, Aliyah Mayo, also with Lexi Butts, Cameron Scrivens, and Kat Ottenry. And introducing Baker McNamara, Alexis Beckett, Cheyenne Dantzler, and Cy Bergato. From Studio One at Temple University, this is Temple Talk. Hello everyone, welcome back to Temple Talk. It's been a minute since we last sat down at the table together, but do not worry, we are back for three more episodes to round out season seven. We have a great show for you today. Local blogger from Temple is here. Her name is Vanessa Ferriello, and she's here to chat with us about how she started her blogging career. And later on, we have musical guest Rubber, who will perform their song Control for us. First, let's go around the table and catch up with our host. Guys, I feel like it's been forever since I've seen no. you. Um, it has been forever. How was, been how, how how was, was your winter break? How was your winter break? <laughs> it was it was okay. Yeah? Yeah, it was okay. Nothing was, special? Nothing special. Just a lot of work, yeah. mm -hmm. a lot of sleep. Mm -hmm. But that's good. You know, that's yeah. the winter break mood. 100%. But it was good. It was good. 100%. It was good. It was very quick. It was my birthday, so that was fun. Aww. Aww. You look Christmas you. birthday. Yes, Love Christmas that. Eve. That is me. Yes. Um, <laughs> very ironic, I know. Um, but yeah, I felt like I was working and, you know, just like hanging out with family for the short little break we had. But it was nice. Yeah. It was nice. Yeah. What's you know about? I feel like it was just exciting because we're in a new decade. It's yes. a fresh start, a decade of possibility. Yes. So mm -hmm. I think it was just like a lot of refreshing, mm -hmm. like just yeah, resurfacing a lot of like the past decade. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but this was our last winter break. Like, I know. Ever. Oh, I know. So I don't know about you, but I slept in. Yes. I treated myself real good. I, I was very relaxed. A lot of yes. zen. It was perfect. Salt bass. I it love it. Good. That's it what good. it's all about. Sleep. Exactly, mm -hmm. guys. Well. And good food. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Well, I'm so glad to be back with you three. As always, we have so much to talk about. There has been quite a lot going on in the world of pop culture. Let's get right into it and break everything down for you. Now, guys, the 93rd Oscars were one to remember as Janelle Monet opens up with a phenomenal performance that doubled as a way to call out the Oscars for having no female nominations for Best Director, despite there being some really good candidates this year. Chris Rock and Steve Martin also called out the Oscars for the lack of black representation in all the categories. Now guys, with all that being said, do you think that this is onstage activism works or is there concerns that this is just like one big PR stunt? I mean, the way I feel about it is we're talking about it now. Mm -hmm. So obviously it was meant to send a message because there's gonna be so many people elaborating on it. and. At the end of the day, not everyone is going to be happy with who was nominated and who wasn't. Yes, do I think a lot of people were snubbed, but at the same time, everyone's going to get snubbed at some point or another. And I think with Parasite winning Best Feature Film, which was a foreign movie where yeah. you have, if I watched it the other night, we had to put the English subtitles on. So I think we still have lots of room to grow, but I also love that Natalie Portman's cape had all the female directors mm -hmm. that were snubbed on it. So I love that, that very, aspect. That cool and story. I thought that was a way where it was very elegant, yet not too flashy, but made its point. 100%. Okay, so. yeah. I think it's ironic that Chris Rock had something to say about it because he actually hosted the Oscars the year Oscars So White was trending yes. on Twitter. Oh so it's funny that now he's coming back and he's exactly. making a statement about it. Yeah. I do agree. I think that there always, there's always going to be times when we feel that someone's snubbed, but I think that since it's so consistent mm -hmm. and it feels like no one's doing anything to change it, it's like where can we honor the creative like ideas and the creative minds yeah. of Absolutely. not just people of color, but women, mm -hmm. people from different parts of the world and it's just like I feel like I'm tired of seeing the same names acknowledged for mm -hmm. their work. You're so right. And I just think that like we <clears throat> we're all figuring out that these award shows are not what everybody thought they exactly. were. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know just as much as we see the night of it there's so much preparation that goes into it. There's a lot of PR that goes into who even gets picked. So I mean like I wouldn't get upset mm -hmm. if you know it's not as genuine as it's portraying itself Absolutely. to be. Yeah, I so I think that artists just kind of have to put up that 
creative block where they just don't let that penetrate that has nothing to do with them as you know artists or movie directors yeah. or singers or the you know the Grammys like we've been having this conversation around more than just the Oscars we have yeah. the conversation about the Grammys the Academy mm -hmm. Awards whatever have you I mean, you just have to put up your blinders and like do what you do and focus mm -hmm. on your craft. In my opinion, these award shows are not what they used to be. Absolutely. You know? know didn't you see on the the person that the ex president of the Grammys literally said yeah. that it's yes. all kind of a money machine? It is. Honestly, it is. I don't think that these celebrities are doing it as a PR son. I think they're doing it because that's genuinely how they feel. And mm -hmm. no matter what right. they say, nothing's gonna change because there's rich people that are in power. Oh, exactly. And at the end of the day, Everyone money wants, talks. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly and it's sad talks. because though for artists who are spending their entire life to mm -hmm. perfect their craft it's like you know going to a competition and already having the winner be picked out for Absolutely. you even though you tried your hardest mm -hmm. so I think that is a downside of it and I hope that mm -hmm. the pressure gets put on these awards to like make it a people's choice if they can decide to make it a people's, people's choice. choice is actually a people's choice <laughs> no, yeah, if it's not I'm done <laughs> I go online and I go, okay, best movie this, best actress that. Because, like, I want my voice to be heard and yeah. I want to support those right. that I like. Right. 100%. We should be able to do that 100%. for all Absolutely. Well, <laughs> we'll see. Maybe it'll change in the Hopefully. years to come. We can Hopefully. help. Hopefully. We can we'll help. <laughs> all right, guys. Let's hope you have your dance moves ready because TikTok is officially taking over. In 2019, this video sharing app was downloaded more than Instagram and Facebook combined and shows no sign of slowing down anytime soon. With TikTok stars like Charlie DeMello appearing in Super Bowl commercials, the platform and its users are taking the world by storm. Now, many are comparing the platform to Vine, which has been gone for a few years now. Um, for its short videos and rapid rise to popularity, but with TikTok users gaining thousands or even million followers every day for short dances and lip syncing videos, <laughs> TikTok is going beyond what anyone imagined it could accomplish. Now, do you guys think it's easier to become TikTok famous or Vine famous? <laughs> See, I was just thinking about this because the young lady, Jalea Harmon, she was like, made the renegade dance yes. popular. Mm -hmm. She finally just got credit at the NBA All-Star Games this weekend. And I think it's just crazy because no one was helping my sis out. She wasn't renegading yeah. to the bank. She was sitting at home. Charlie's renegading to right, the bank. Right there in yeah. Super Bowl commercials, making mm -hmm. money off of it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this new idea of instant gratification or instant fame off of something so mm -hmm. minor and something just like, if I thought of a cute little dance, I could snap my finger right mm -hmm. now and someone could be like, oh, that's cute. Let's do the Kiara and they start <laughs> oh, snapping yeah. their finger. Go, but you should start naming it after yourself. I right. Guess, right? <laughs> we can yeah, all do it and just take off and we'll all have a cute little check too. Oh, yeah. Do you guys but, have yeah. TikToks? I don't. No? I don't. Are you not a TikToker? I like was originally refusing to hop on the bandwagon, but I have this new obsession with learning how to shuffle, like okay. the dance. And so many people said they learned through TikTok, so I'm okay. open to trying it on TikTok. But what it does remind me of, because it, it definitely does have Vine vibes. Yes. And I think it's funny because everyone's making the joke like Vine walks so TikTok could run. Mm -hmm. I but I mean, look how much it was downloaded yeah. and over Instagram and Facebook. But I also think, remember with Vine, they did the Vine tours with yeah. Matt Espinosa yes. and yes. Nashville. That's how Shawn Mendes got recognized. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm. I kind of want to see who the new Shawn Mendes is from TikTok because I feel like, yeah, like a dance is all fun, but where's the new heartthrob? Mm. I like the app itself. Mm. I think it's like super cute. It's super fun. In today's society, I think anything that you can get people to do that makes it not so serious, we mm -hmm. should all just like, you know, be 100%. for it. Yeah. I so don't like the, I, like the ideology that everything you do has to make you famous. Right. Yes. Yeah. Not everything is worth being famous over because fame, with fame mean. comes a lot of other responsibilities mm -hmm. and things like that. I think it's a great, fun app for people to dance and let go and, yeah. you know, to vibe with. I see people doing it with their coworkers. Yeah. It's just Moms, like really cute. Crazy. Right. I just don't think we should be going into anything with like, the ideology that, oh, we should get famous. But I do think that it is easier because someone I know is actually TikTok famous and all he did was post pictures with dogs. All right. See? My sister so posted a TikTok video with dogs. Water and she got like over 100,000 Well, views. listen, guys, I have a TikTok, so when yeah. I become TikTok famous, okay. I don't want See? any of you trying to hop on my channel. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Well, last month on January 26th, the world was hit with some tragic news of Kobe Bryant's passing, along with eight other passengers in a helicopter crash, including his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna. The social media hashtag Girl Dad circled Twitter and Instagram after his death due to his unconditional love for his daughters. Many male celebrities posted pictures with their daughters along with their hashtag Girl Dad over the past few weeks in response to the new hashtag. Now, do you guys think that Girl Dad hashtag will be a trend or will fade over time? 
Um, I think that when anyone passes that there becomes a trend of, mm -hmm. wow, we should really value people in our lives. Um, I think that the girl dad thing, I hope it sticks you because too. it's very cute. So. But I think like the the bigger picture there with the whole girl dad hashtag is just being like, you know, I'm proud to be a girl dad. Most dads Absolutely. are proud to be a son dad, a boy dad, or whatever you would call that. Exactly. So it's nice to see that the girls are like, wow, like dads are proud to be girl dads. But nonetheless, I think that um, in the tragic passing of Kobe and his daughter, it it just makes you want to hold the people that you love even more tight. And I hope that that doesn't fade sure. because we shouldn't have to go through such tragic experiences no. that, to make us realize that the people in our lives are absolutely irreplaceable. Absolutely. And I think that with the two of them and the eight other people that passed away, it makes you realize like that your worst day and that something that you're doing that you think is the worst thing ever, like that that's your worst day and that could be the best day for one of those eight people yeah. so exactly I mean just overall it was one of the most tragic days I oh, couldn't 100%. remember a death like that since Michael Jackson like mm -hmm. absolutely just beyond sad now guys we do have an awesome show for you today stick around because coming up next we'll sit down with blogger, blogger Vanessa Ferriello in the meantime let's see what our girl Cameron did at Culture Fest February is Black History Month and the Penn Museum celebrated with Culture Fest, which highlighted both contemporary and traditional cultures throughout the African diaspora. With over 15 different programs running all day, attendees were able to immerse themselves in all things Africa. Come take a look. A lot of visitors don't want to commit to like a full hour long tour. They just want like a tidbit. They just want a morsel. And um, so the daily digs are really interesting because people that give those are people widely across the museum. One day you might hear a conservator talk about how they've conserved an object. One day you might hear a curator talk in their very expert language about something. One day you might get me and I'm more of an educator. And another day you might get, you know, a student that's like studying very intensely this object, um, a person from the country the object is from, you know, it spans the gamut. So I, I think they're really fun and um, we've seen a huge uptick in how many people participate. We did a dance workshop, like contemporary and traditional uh, West African movements, and that was really, we got the blood flowing. Did you dance? I did. Yes. Of course, I taught it. Hello. Nice. Could you show us something? No, girl, no. Oh, no. Sorry, you guys aren't getting that right now. Sorry. Yeah. The main thing is to, to talk about Africa in an accessible way. Museums have this eye, this feeling of don't touch that, don't touch that, but we just want to bring that, yes, touch, be a part, let's communicate, yes. All right guys, so as you can see, there is a lot going on here at the Penn Museum as far as culture immersion goes. If you are a Tamil student, you can actually bring your ID here every first Wednesday of the month at 5 p.m. and you can get in for free and just see all that the Penn Museum has to offer. Thanks guys for watching, it's Cameron Scrimmons reporting for Tumble Talk. Welcome back everyone. We are so thrilled to have our first guest with us. She's a lifestyle, fashion, travel, and beauty blogger. She's also a Lulu's ambassador and is partnered with brands like Neutrogena, all while being a Temple student. Please welcome to the show, Vanessa Ferriolo. Thank you guys. Vanessa, thank you so Thanks much for, for being, being here. here. Thank you guys for having me. Looking fashionable. Yes. <laughs> I mean, thank you. I want to rock a hat like that, but my head's too small. Yeah. Oh, you'd rock it anyway. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody but can rock it. Before one. we get into the nitty gritty, tell us about you. Where are you from? How you got to Temple? Yeah. So, my name is Vanessa Ferriolo. Um, I am a senior marketing major at Temple with a management information systems minor. Um, <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> um, so, I'm from a small town in Pennsylvania uh, called Ashland, PA. Okay. Very small town, everyone knows everyone type of deal. So I for sure wanted to come to a big city um, where I really didn't know many people. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like where I ended up like with Temple here. Um, my sister also went here too, so she was definitely a big influence in me deciding where to go. Uh, but yeah, otherwise like just out here doing my blogging, fashion, beauty, lifestyle, travel, all that sort of stuff. Love that. Yeah, so. So is anyone from where you're from, mm -hmm. are they beauty bloggers? <laughs> um, honestly, I've never been asked that question before, but 
I don't know of anybody really from my area that is. Um, there's a girl that I actually got to know um, after moving to the city who does photography and she's really su successful at it um, and she lives kind of like nearby but nobody within my like actual town or nearby schools or anything does blogging or any sort of pioneering stuff like that. it good yeah, for you really. girl <laughs> making a statement so when you came to temple did you already have a blog installed or did you start it once you became a student and yeah. it just took off so I actually started blogging in 2017 um, that was the year I graduated from high school as well so it was right before coming to college um, but actually I started it because I was a senior in high school like I said but I was um, doing online school and going to college at the same time. So oh, wow. I wasn't actually going to high school. So I had a class only Tuesday, Thursday. So I had a lot of downtime. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's when I was like, I was getting a lot of inspiration from people that I followed and decided to start my own blog, kind of just like looked up everything on Google, how to do it all on my own mm -hmm. and started, started it then and then brought that along with me. And I knew that there would be a lot more oppor opportunities when I came to the city to blog a lot about like a lot more things That's so amazing. did you have like an aesthetic going into your beauty blogging and fashion blogging yeah. or was it just kind of like we'll see where this goes yeah so I kind of developed like an aesthetic um, although I was I don't even know how old I was like 18 or so not to say that I'm much older now <laughs> but like it was definitely I had a, a, a different um, style back then and really like my aesthetic was kind of different from what you'll see now um, but it definitely shaped me to where I am now and it's not like that dramatically different but it definitely was different when I started um, but yeah so with that being said, do you have a focus now on like what type of fashion trends you follow or any lifestyle trends that you particularly stick to now that you really didn't back then? Um, I definitely just stick to like whatever I'm like, I don't stick to actually any specific trend. I don't really follow any specific trends either. It's kind of just like whatever inspires me mm -hmm. and whatever I'm feeling in that moment. Like my style typically tends to say rather like boho chic, like stuff like that, but it doesn't ever stray too far away from that. Um, and that's kind of how I've been, but it's definitely developed over time as well. Love that, love that. So with being an influencer, um, that's a great responsibility. Oh, okay. So like, how do you engage with your followers? I mean, like for somebody like me, I don't consider myself an influencer, but I know a lot of people will like ask me questions. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> they will ask me questions and different tips. So do you find yourself constantly spreading yourself thin or is it just me? No. <laughs> okay, and you're not an influencer? <laughs> no. It's definitely, it's definitely um, difficult. I love when people are asking questions though and asking for different tips. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the rewarding experience mm -hmm. because you know that what you're sharing is actually affecting somebody. Right. And that's not necessarily like always, I don't always go into something being like, oh, like what kind of response is this going to get? I right. just share what I share and then you know, people will come up to me or will DM me and say, like, this has helped me out so much. Like, I'm so glad you shared this. And I was like, I didn't even, I, that wasn't my intent, mm -hmm. but I'm so glad it did help you. Mm -hmm. um, and it definitely is difficult to keep up with. Um, it's, it's always my main goal to make sure that I'm remaining authentic and actually engaging with my audience because, like, that's most important to me. Like, you guys mentioned in the beginning, I do have some cool ambassadorships right now and partnerships that I've worked with in the past and I'm currently working with. Um, and I definitely want to stay true to myself. Um, but yeah, I kind of lost my train of thought right there. No, with it's that, okay. But yeah. That's you influencing. You're telling exactly. us what we need to hear. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I, I just want to remain authentic with everything and make sure that I'm, you know, responding to people, engaging with them, like you said, and will continue to do that of course because it's worked for me so far so bouncing Amazing. off that and what Aaliyah said like building followers everyone always jokes like oh follow for follow buying followers but how do you kind of keep that flow and that gain of followers coming and have it coming organically instead yeah. of just being like oh follow me oh gosh <laughs> so I will never do that I've never done that I am a strong believer in organically gaining a following um, 
that's how I started. I never once bought followers, never will. Um, but it definitely is all about like building those relationships, making sure that you're engaging with your audience and letting them know that you're there and that you're a real person. Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by all means, like right. nobody should ever think I'm not a real person, but um, it's important for them to know that it, life isn't always what it seems to be on the internet. Yeah. Like everybody always has some other stuff going on outside mm -hmm. of social media. So, um, yeah, I think that's super important. Yeah. And it, there, it's never been like an always upward going, mm -hmm. um, steady flow with gaining yeah, followers ever. So sometimes there have been lows, like recently I've been going through a low. Um, and it's, again, it's just like, you just got to hope for the best and that people will stay with you and will continue to grow with you. Absolutely. Um, other times, though, there's not really much you could do about it aside from just like continually, continuously engaging with others and with the community as well. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, it really is. And how do you feel? Like, do you feel like you're more of like a positive, you know, light for people, or is it strictly like just like fashion and beauty? No, I would say that. I definitely, because like when I'm at school here, mm -hmm. trust me, I don't get dressed up every day to go to <laughs> class. I rarely get dressed up to go to class. I rarely do my hair or my makeup when I go to class. Like, mm -hmm. So I definitely show that um, on my Instagram stories. Like I show that when I'm vlogging. Like I show the real side of me as well. Like not to say that this side of me isn't real, right. but like I'm definitely showing that side of me too because I. I think like it's important mm -hmm. um, and yeah I think I have a positive attitude um, sometimes I will share some information though that isn't as positive yeah. but it's just like so people understand like that they aren't alone as well and like people can relate to that and it's important to share those things too and that's still mm. a positive influence yeah Absolutely. yeah for yeah. sure yeah but it's certainly not always just strictly fashion lifestyle beauty whatever um, I definitely like I said want to make sure that I'm being authentic and like showing all sides of my life. And it's so important to stay so honest and very transparent with your followers, especially if you want them to continue to follow yeah, you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And like a lot of my followers know me in person too. Yeah. So like they know me and I wouldn't want them seeing me portraying myself as someone I'm not online. So after school, are we going to go into fashion? Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I don't know where I'll end up. I've always been fascinated with the fashion um, community and the industry itself. I would love to be like doing social media or digital media of any sort um, after college. But I don't know exactly where I'll end up. Right. We'll see when the time comes. However, I don't plan on staying um, you know, within a company for a while. I definitely have some projects that I've been working on Ooh. that I would like to continue to do so that I could grow into like my own bigger business one day. I love so. that and we believe in you. Yes, yes. thank you. And we will be following you <laughs> along you the so way. Much. Thank you. Well, Amazing. thank you, Vanessa, so much for being here thank today. Thank you for having me. I know I speak for all of us when I say you have a bright future ahead of you, so stay right where you are because we have more coming your way. Up next, we'll sit down with Bell Tower Music's Rubber before they perform for us. But first, in the spirit of Valentine's Day, Tempering University held an event highlighting self-love, resilience, and hope titled Love to You. One of our newest correspondents, Alexis Beckett, has more on this festive event. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Alexis Beckett here for Temple Talk. Today we are at the Love to You event. I'm here with the co-coordinators, Brittany and Claudia. Thank you guys for uh, thank you guys for being with me today. Um, so Valentine's Day can usually be, you know, towards your significant other, and that's what you celebrate. Um, what do you guys think the importance is of, you know, also loving yourself and making sure that you're okay as well? So self-love is very important, especially for folks who might not have a partner um, during this Valentine's Day season. It's always um, a wonderful experience to just honor yourself and respect yourself and to treat yourself as you would a, a partner. 
Yeah, I agree, Brittany. Um, we hope that tonight brings a lot of empowerment for folks who are here to be able to love themselves and celebrate themselves this Valentine's Day. Right, exactly. Thank you. So um, there's a lot of performance here. Um, what do you guys think are some of the highlights, you know, of today's event? I, honestly, I want to say all of the performers. We just have such a diverse group of performers today. So I'm very excited to see everyone's. We have spoken word from Babel. We have um, a couple folks doing some dance performances from um, Dare to Dance and Temple Tappers. Um, we have some acapella groups like Synchronize and Pitch Please. So there's a, a very wide variety and we're excited about all of them. Yeah, we're welcoming some new performers to our event this year, and we're really excited to see what they have came up with for, for our event. All right. Thank you guys so much. Once again, I'm here at the Love To You event with the co-coordinators. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to Temple Talk. With us now is musical duo from right here at Temple University, created by Andrew Loper and John Delafranco. Rubber is a Klein Award-winning duo, having played right down on the Benjamin Franklin Parkway for their Wawa Welcome America Festival. Rubber is on the road to even more success, and we are so happy to have them with us today. Yes. Hello, guys. Hi. Okay, so you have to tell us, how did you guys become Rubber? <laughs> You want to take that one? Yeah, sure. I met Andrew through a mutual friend, uh, Libby Forbes, who is also a musician. Shout out to her. Um, and we tried to start a band together. Did not work out, but we stuck around each other. Yeah. All right. How did you guys come up with that name? Like, Well, um, we went to Nashville to record vocals for our first EP. Um, and we were all just kind of hanging out. and. We were bouncing around name ideas because we were at the time we were Andrew Loper and the Only Memories, which was way too long and no one liked it. <laughs> um, so uh, we watched the movie Rubber. If you've ever seen that, it's about a tire that comes to life and goes on a killing spree. It's very strange. Okay, okay. different. That, Love <laughs> right yes, here, and, and henceforth we were named Rubber. Okay, very nice. Well, so, how would you guys say you describe your music? Like, what's your genre? Um, at its core, it's pop music. Yeah, but. Okay. I don't know, neo soul influences, R and B influences. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so Control is your first single. Um, do you mind telling us like a little bit about how that came about? Did you have like trouble picking one or was that the one where you were like, nope, that's it. That's the single? I that was your decision to make it the single. I right? think <laughs> Honestly, it, people, we, we'd been playing out for a while and we'd been playing okay. the songs, uh, and that was the one that people really gravitated towards. Okay. Um, Honestly, it's really sad. So I never really got how so many people would come up and be like, oh my God, that's, you just told me about my life. Um, it's kind of sad in, in that <laughs> sense. But, um, but yeah, people really, re it resonated with people. And so it was just a logical decision. Okay, what are some of the venues that you guys have played? Because you said you played Control there for the audiences before. Yeah. Uh, can we do like, take turns? <laughs> <laughs> Pub Web. Okay, familiar. Um, yeah, no Represent pub. Temple. Yes. Okay, pub we love web. that. Um, Green Soul. Okay. You ever heard of Green Soul? Warehouse on Watts. Uh, okay. Kung Fu Necktie. Okay. Wait, I have seriously. Yeah. So the Wawa and Welcome America. Like, I was there one year because I had to work it. Oh, really? But um, <laughs> honestly, huge event. Like, how was that? That was was that like maybe one of the biggest crowds you performed for? Because that's a pretty big show out. Honestly, it wasn't a huge crowd there because we played kind of during the day. Oh, okay. But, okay. but it was it was definitely <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely an amazing experience, yeah. and it was uh, super flattering because Chill Moody um, ended up I picking us out. Moody, yeah. He's yeah. from Philly too. Yeah, he's a Philly yeah. rapper. Okay. He's he's had a lot of national success, and um, he like reached out and was like, "Hey, I'm putting together, I'm curating a whole stage. Like, will you guys?" perform on it and really, so that's we, were, exciting. we were really lucky. That's, like, that's insane. And we didn't even have any music out at the time so it, he was really taking a chance on us. See, people knew how talented you guys were already, didn't have anything out. <laughs> 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 Is there a specific person you guys look for, like, look for as inspiration when you're making music? Definitely not. No? No. no. Really? No. You have like no like idol that you look up I to. Get, I am passively influenced by the music that I listen, so I'll okay. be I'll be listening to music and I'll be like, 
this is what influenced us, and I didn't even realize it. Oh, okay, cool. Like, I was listening That's to fine. Earth, Wind, and Fire the other day, and I was oh, like, I, I, wow, I've stolen so much material from this band, I didn't even know <laughs> it. <laughs> um, I mean, I, like, I love... Frank Ocean and SZA, mm -hmm. and obviously th those are major I was gonna influences. say, you have a very nice sound like, to it. Yeah, it's it, very it is. comforting. Thank I feel like you. it's great drive music, just wanna chill and relax. Yes, Love it. tell the people at home that. Actually, where can we stream your music now that you think about it if you wanna listen to it on a drive? Yes. Um, all streaming platforms, so Apple Music, Spotify, awesome. Amazon Tidal. Music, if you listen to music on Amazon Music, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we, uh, we're on Tidal, we're on it all. Oh, wow, even title. Okay. Title. Got, Actually, if you have a title, stream us on title because they pay you the best. Oh, okay. love I was going to say, it is $15 a month to have that. I tried See? it and I was like, no, no. That's what it's for. No, no, no. It's so we can get over. paid 0 0.06 cents instead yes, of 0 0.04 cents yeah. Yeah. for okay. stream. Thanks, Spotify. So now you told me you have a new EP coming out. Can you talk about that? Give us a little, like, about what it's going to be like, what it's going to sound like. What can we expect? <laughs> So it's it's called Rubber Baby, or no, that's the first one. The first one's called Rubber Baby, okay. the second one's called Buggy Bumpers, okay. and they're they're part one and two. Um, and the first one, I mean, the all the songs were written around the same time. The, yeah, the first two EPs are all come from the same era okay. of okay. writing. Um, and they were all really, like, John and me in his apartment, like, a year and a half ago. We didn't even know we were going to be doing this professionally. Mm -hmm. And we just, like, sat down and wrote them, John on acoustic guitar and myself on vocals. And it's, so they're all just very honest stories about That's what people life. connect to the most, I think. Honesty, so. transparency. Yeah. yeah. Um, most of it is, like, live recorded instruments mm -hmm. um, with a couple, like, produced elements. Mm -hmm. okay. And specifically on the second EP that's about to be coming out, February 28th, um, <laughs> we... How it's it's a lot more serious. I would say the first right. one. There are okay. some more fun songs. This one, it's definitely deeper. Yeah, it, ready to be in your feels, in your okay. bag, okay. <laughs> a little. Mm. Where do you guys see yourself in the next five years? Where do you guys see Rubber going within the next five years? Oh God, if I knew, I I would love to tell you. <laughs> right. Um, touring, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we we started touring. Um, our first tour was. December 2019. Okay. So, um, and then we're going to be on tour again in March, going down to South by Southwest, which is super exciting. Oh, that's, that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. cool. um, yeah. So, um, we're just hoping to keep that momentum up. And yeah. w in the next uh, year, we hope to release our first album. Awesome. Okay. Now, you guys obviously are Temple students. So, like, how do you juggle that? Like, I can't imagine that being easy, especially like doing it in your own room. That's like your own resources come into life. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, he's not a Temple yeah, student. Yeah, I'm an alum. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Well, you still. Yeah. You were still an owl. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was, I mean, we were doing it while I was still in school, mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, how I'm do you in balance it? right now and it sucks. <laughs> 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 we can relate. Right. <laughs> I walked to class today and I was like, I have to miss this class because I have to go get my guitar for this. Oh. <laughs> exactly. It'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> We're really running from event to event to event. Yeah. Yeah. How have you guys noticed that being oh, like full-time musicians has impacted your life? Especially um, you now that you've graduated. Yeah, I mean, I still have my day job. I, okay, I still, yes, I still work at I work at a consumer defense law firm. Oh, okay, so okay. Well, right. right. Whole 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 career. Career. I guess we should what? ask you what your major was. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah should start that off. <laughs> yeah, I actually studied economics. Oh, school. okay. Um, so you really just <laughs> right. dipping in all the okay. <laughs> but um, but I'm trying. It's it's only part time, and music music is definitely takes up most of my time. Uh, it definitely changes your life a lot because you're. Sure. Uh, you work when everybody else is having fun mm -hmm. and like you know so it's it's pretty much if you want to hang out with me outside of nine to five when I might have some time I'm going to be playing a show so <laughs> you can come see me sing but um <laughs> so that's definitely changed yeah, it's, my it's, life a lot. definitely hard to juggle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, if you guys could meet one singer, one artist, mm. who would it be like your biggest that like, you would actually like fangirl over? Or maybe you don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> I would go back in time. I would meet Robert Johnson. Oh, He's my okay. favorite guitarist. Okay. Definitely. That's me. No name. No name. name. I love No Name. Oh, hi. <laughs> no She's name. amazing. Awesome. Love that. And then, creative. what's been your favorite memory performing? Like, what, do you have like a time that was like, this is great, about like a dream type stuff? Um, my favorite, so have you guys ever heard of So Far Sounds? It's a, hmm. it's a, like a secret show company. So they, oh, they right. have like secret lineups and secret venues, and you don't you don't find out anything about the lineup until you get there, and you don't find out the location until 24 hours before. 
Okay. And yeah, it's, it's really cool. And they're different. Keeps you on your toes. Right, yeah. it does. And so we've been lucky enough to partner with them on a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. And our first ever so far show was like incredible. It really? was just amazing energy in the room. And it was at this rock climbing gym. Because okay. they use like really hey. weird random venues. It's very cool. Um, and yeah, the energy in the room was just insane. It's amazing. See, that's so cool. See, I've never heard of an event like that, but I feel like it's really... No, Philly has a great underground yeah, scene when it comes to that. Scene. Yeah. What's your favorite memory? Definitely the first time we played full band at an open mic night uh, at Time Bar and Restaurant. Okay. okay. We played uh, a couple of our songs with the house band. They had never played with us before. They had never like seen our music. Yeah. And we ended up making a connection with a drummer that night yeah. who recorded with us for our, yeah. our EPs. Yeah. Shout out Matt Chenery. <laughs> He's know, amazing. It's so cool. Like, I feel like you guys are really taking off, and it's really exciting to see how you guys are like coming together, and your band is so solidified, like yeah. even with Control and all your other music. Exactly. But you know what? Andrew and John, thank you so much for coming here today. We really appreciate you guys being here. We're looking forward to watching your careers grow. Don't touch that remote. Coming up <laughs> in just a moment, Rubber will be performing their song Control for us. But first, who knew Valentine's Day could be such a controversial topic? We sent our new correspondent, Baker, out on campus to ask Temple students their opinions on Valentine's Day. Hi, I'm Baker McNamara and I'm here with Temple Talk on Temple University's campus in front of the bell tower and we're here to ask Temple students what they think about Valentine's Day. So tell me, what do you think about Valentine's Day? Um, I like Valentine's Day. I think it's a good holiday. Mm -hmm. Like, it's obviously made up, but I feel like everybody should be loving on each other every day. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why every day isn't Valentine's Day. That is a really great mentality. <laughs> like, 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 even awesome. if you're not in a relationship, you know? Like, just spread the love. I think that Valentine's Day is kind of like a pointless... There's no deeper meaning to it. It's kind of just a capitalist tool to, like, get us to buy a bunch of stuff. But how harmless can a holiday that's all about love really be? Agreed. So for me, Valentine's Day mm -hmm. kind of reminds me of um, elementary school, mm -hmm. where we had all these arts and crafts projects in mm -hmm. school and then brought it back to our parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my parents were, like, always my Valentine's mm -hmm. until, like, I got older. But now it's just, like, a day to, like, market stuff, like, yeah. sell chocolates, sell, sell flowers, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was more fun when we were little. I'm pretty jaded about it. I want to say it's a Hallmark holiday, but that's really just That's what a lot of people are saying. Oh. Yeah, so. mm. Okay. Yeah. Maybe next year? Probably not, but we'll see what happens. I find it interesting. I wish I knew more about why mm -hmm. it happens historically. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. I feel like they told you that as a kid and I just forgot. Something. We were just talking. We think it was either religious or maybe Hallmark started it. That ring a bell for you in any way? I don't know, I hear a lot of conspiracies about Hallmark starting mm -hmm. a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. so that's possible. I think it's kind of dumb. If I had to spend Valentine's Day anywhere in the world, it would probably be Temple Campus, though. Mm, why? Because you can always get super awesome homemade crafts and things from all of the mm. students trying to make some money. Good to know. You heard it here first. Hey guys, welcome back to Temple Talk. With us now is a musical duo from right here at Temple University. Now you guys are performing your new single, Control. Do you want to tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So um, Control is kind of a, a meditation on um, the, the feeling you get before you get into a relationship. Okay. So it's the idea of like bringing baggage to the table and hoping that the baggage matches the other person. Okay. okay I like that. Is this the vibe for your upcoming music? Um, it's, uh, I would say the new project is, it has a lot of different sounds, a lot of influences, okay, but, okay. Um, but the style that represented in, uh, in Control, you'll definitely see in the rest of the project. Awesome, so you guys are getting us in our feels, <laughs> I see. <laughs> yes, definitely. lots of feels. Okay, awesome, well, we're gonna let you guys take it from here. Cool. Um, and we'll be excited for this. <laughs> <laughs> The song is called Control. And the night is about to start And the bar's just wearing off Running to my friends They said see you later And I know they never will why'd i have to take a pill to feel like myself i feel like a traitor 
And I ran to catch a train And the bar just numbs the pain I feel in my legs I'm gonna miss it Oh, to a part of town And I'm trying to not be loud Don't want to be late Don't want to risk it Oh, but it's time to start taking time for my own damn self, yeah. And the war in other city, yeah, it doesn't help. I believe it, I really feel it. I'm a different man. Then I was when I came to no will. When I leave, take a shot, take a hit, and it won't hurt a bit. Am I crazy for loving you? And did I have enough time to let my brain breathe inside my skull? Oh, 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 let's just pretend I have control. I have control. And I know it's a bad day. But we always feel this way. I know in my head you're gonna hate me. Oh, ooh, oh, but you say I gotta feel And I always drag my heels Cause I'll never get it I'm just too crazy Oh, but it's time to start taking time For my own damn self, yeah And the war in other city, yeah, it doesn't help I believe it, I really feel it I'm a different Man, the noise when I came to no will When I leave, take a shot, take a hit And it won't hurt a bit Am I crazy for loving you? And did I have enough time to Let my brain breathe inside my skull Oh, oh, oh let's just pretend I have control I have control In the movies, they tell us all how our lives should be Vibrant so we exist almost vicariously Through these lenses of our oversensitivity We are fake control To have control Thank you. I want to thank John, Andrew of Rubber, as well as Vanessa for joining us today. That's all the time we have for this episode. So Aaliyah, Lindsay, Kiera, and I will see you right here next time on Temple, Temple Talk! Talk. <laughs>